Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about right ascension. It's one of the two coordinate systems of the celestial sphere, the one that's probably the more difficult one to understand. So let's try to pay close attention to this. All right, what does right ascension mean? It's the number of hours the object, the star, the constellation, whatever it may be, is behind the sun on March 21st. That's during the vernal equinox. On that day, the right ascension is the number of hours behind the sun. For example, if the sun rises at 8 o'clock in the morning and it's two hours behind, then the star will rise at 10 o'clock in the morning. Or if the sun sets at 6 o'clock at night, then the star will set at 8 o'clock at night. It's two hours behind. So let's think about that for a moment. If something is two hours behind the sun, then when the sun rises, two hours later, the star will rise. Of course, you can't see the star because it's daylight. The sun moves through the day during the, during the daytime. And finally in the evening, the sun sets and the star will be two hours behind it. So for the next two hours, the star will still be up in the sky, slowly moving towards the horizon. And then two hours later, will also set over the horizon and disappear. So if something is two hours behind the sun on a particular day, that means you can only see it for that number of hours before it disappears over the horizon as well. If we take a look at Sirius, notice that on March 21st, and that's of course a special day right here, on March 21st, Sirius will be about six hours behind the sun. Notice I have a little note here, it says round to the nearest even hour, two, four, six, eight, and so forth. It makes it easier to deal with, and you'll see in just a moment why. So Sirius, let's say, is about six hours behind the sun. So on March the 21st, when the sun sets, Sirius is six hours behind. Now, how far is six hours? Remember that everything makes a complete trip in a 24-hour period. That's because the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours. So six hours is one quarter of a 24-hour day. That would be one quarter of a complete circle or 90 degrees. Goes four times 90 is 360 degrees. So when the sun sets at, uh, let's say, 6 o'clock at night, then Sirius would be six hours behind it. Sirius would be straight up in the sky. So on March 21st, when the sun disappears over the horizon, the sky turns dark, and you look up, Sirius will begin to appear directly above you. And now for the next six hours, Sirius will work its way down to the horizon. That's on March 21st. But what happens on April 21st? Well, because the Earth revolves around the sun, Every month, the Earth moves through an angle of 30 degrees. That accounts for two hours because the motion at night is 15 degrees per hour, so 30 degrees accounts for two hours. That means that on April 21st, if Sirius was six hours behind on March 21st, it will only be four hours behind on April 21st, and two hours behind on May 21st, it ends up catching up. So let's make a table here. So for Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, which is part of the constellation Canis Major. Uh, March 21st, six hours behind. April 24th, four hours behind. May 21st, two hours behind. And June 21st, zero, which means it's even with the sun. So if someone says, hey, on June 21st, let's go look for Sirius, you'll be out of luck because it'll be right in the direction of the sun. It'll be up. When the sun comes up, it'll go down. When the sun goes down, and you will not be able to see Sirius. What about in July? Let's say in July it'll be minus two hours, which means now it'll be two hours ahead of the sun, which means it will rise first. Two hours later, the sun will rise. And when it sets, two hours later, it will set. So in the morning, Sirius will rise before the sun will rise for two hours. So when we look in the east, July 21st, let's say 5, 6 o'clock in the morning before the sun rises. You may even have to go a little bit earlier because it gets lighter earlier in the summer, of course. So all of a sudden you see that bright star rise for an hour or two, and then the sun will come up behind it and drown out the light in the sky and make it disappear. But you'll be able to see it early in the morning. What about August 21st? Let's say we want to go look at Sirius today, and it's close to August 21st now. It'll be minus four hours, which means it'll be four hours ahead of the sun. That means you can't see it in the evening, but you will be able to see it in the morning because it'll rise four hours before the sun rises. So at two, three in the morning, Sirius will begin to rise, and then for the next so many hours, Sirius will go higher and higher in the sky, and eventually, six o'clock rolls around, the sun rises, it becomes light, you can't see it anymore. So if you want to see Sirius at this time of the year, 
in August, you have to go there in the morning, look at the yeast, and watch it rise at 3, 4 in the morning, whenever it may be. All right, let's say we want to look at Vega. All right, Vega is 18 hours behind the sun. That would be in March, so let's put down Vega. So where would it be today? So 18 hours in March, 16 hours in April, 14 hours in May, 12 hours in June, 10 hours in July, and 8 hours in, um, in August. So where would we look for Vega? Let's say that it's August now and the sun sets at, let's say, uh, about 8 o'clock because I think in August the sun will set about 8 o'clock. So at 8 o'clock the sun sets and it becomes dark in the sky and Vega is 8 hours behind. Remember, 6 hours is 90 degrees, 8 hours is another 30 degrees, so from 6 to 8 is another 30 degrees. So when the sun sets at 8 o'clock, I would be looking at Vega about 30 degrees towards the east from the point directly above me. And for the rest of the evening, I can see Vegas move through the zenith at 10 o'clock, at 2 o'clock it'll be there, 4 o'clock it'll be there. So Vega is a bright star that is seen primarily in the summertime. And it'll be mostly directly above us in the late evening. And that's because it's relative position to the sun throughout the year. Let's do one more. Uh, let's see here. I want to see Aldebaran. That's part of the constellation Taurus. And it's four hours behind the sun. And of course, that would be on March the 21st. So Aldebaran. It is four hours behind. So if we want to go look at Aldebaran on March the 21st, where do I look? Well, since it's four hours behind the sun, when the sun sets, let's say at six o'clock in the evening, it'll be four hours behind, four hours for every two hours is 30 degrees. So it's about 60 degrees. So I could be looking kind of towards the west in that direction and I could see Aldebaran. But in April, two hours later, I mean one month later, it's now only two hours behind the sun. So when the sun sets, Aldebaran will be fairly close to the horizon. In May, you will not be able to see it because it's even with the sun. In June, it is two hours ahead of the sun. In July, it's four hours ahead of the sun. And in August, it is six hours ahead of the sun. So you can't see it in the evening because when the sun sets, Aldebaran is already way past the horizon. But in the morning, before the sun rises, Aldebaran will rise six hours be before the sun about now in August. So as the Aldebaran rises, the sun will rise six hours later. So it'll go through the sky from the horizon all the way to the zenith before the sun rises and makes a light and you can't see it anymore. So you should be able to see Aldebaran from about midnight till about six o'clock in the morning. About midnight it will rise. Six o'clock in the morning when it becomes daylight, it'll be directly above you. So that's how you find stars and constellations using the right ascension. So you may, may need to make a little table like that, realize where it is on March 21st, and extrapolate it out to where we are today, whatever the month is that you want to be looking at it. And of course, at that point, you combine where to look using the angle of declination minus the position on the Earth that you're at to see where on the meridian you need to look. And secondly, what time of the night you need to look at the star or the constellation, depending upon where it's at relative to the sun, and you start from March the 21st for the right ascension. And that's how we do that. Hopefully, this made it clear enough for you to find things based upon what you'll find as far as if you look up the right ascension and the angle of declination, you should be able to find anything in the sky at any time of the year using this principle.